Good morning, everyone, and welcome. So today I wanted to talk about spirit guides and just kind of give you a brief introduction from my perspective. Now, I know there are hundreds and thousands, I'm sure millions of different perceptions on spirit guides, but I would I wanted to give you my perception on spirit guides and how we can really start communicating with them and how we can really start releasing some of those attachments that we have. So spirit guides are nothing more. Hi, Karen. Hi, Shirley. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. So spirit guides, in my opinion, from what I have begun to realize. Hi, Angie. Thanks for joining. Spirit guides are the one energy. It is our source energy that comes to us in a specific form that spirit knows, that our source knows, is going to help us to best understand something. Good morning, Kathleen. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Kathy. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. So that's what a spirit guide, in my opinion, is. It is nothing more than source energy coming to you in a form that's going, that you're going to most identify with or that you're going to be able to listen to uh, the most or it's going to be the most receptive thing for you. Good morning, Marie. Good morning. So that's really what we want to realize first. It's not really important, and I know that a lot of people might get upset by this, but it's really not important what your guide looks like, and it's really not important even to know the name. It really doesn't matter because it is one energy that's just taking a different form, and sometimes, you know, that it may take the form of a Native American, it may take the form of Merlin, it may take the form of a naiad, a dryad, it may take the form of a pixie. It may take the form of an alien. It may take the form of your grandma. It may take the form of your grandpa. It may take the form of a wolf or a falcon, but the form does not matter. What always matters is the content of the message. And we can really start to tell if it's spirit guided, if it's loving, kind, and empowering. If it's anything to kind of build up your ego, like, oh my God, you are the chosen one, then you might want to check back in and you might want to really see, ooh, okay, is this spirit or is this my ego? Because if we look at it from that point of view of spirit, spirit always empowers us. It always guides us. It's always loving and kind. Spirit isn't about building up your ego and making you seem like you are the one and only. Spirit will always guide you to empower and to really just love yourself. So then the next thing that we really have to look at when it comes to guides is our attachment. And that is the one thing I want to Really, 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 really insist on release your attachment, guys. Release the attachment to the way that you think it has to come. Let's all be honest with ourselves. We've all been influenced by movies, TV, video games, other people that, you know, learning our spirit guides has to be like this big, crazy, mystical experience. And I'm here to be super honest with you. I don't know one name. Uh, I know one. I know my guardian angel's name. That's it. I don't know any of my other guides names. I don't know what any of them look like. None at all. Don't know. But I also don't care because as long as I'm receiving messages that are loving, kind, empowering, they're helping people then it doesn't really matter the form, nor does it matter the, the way in which they're, you know, doesn't matter if I'm hearing a voice or, you know, if it's whoever talking to me, 
all that matters is that I'm receiving that message that's loving, kind, and that's what we really want to focus on. You know, spirit in itself is, <laughs> spirit in itself is not something that can be fit inside a box. It's really not. Spirit is something that flows. It's ever changing. Well, it's actually not changing, but it's always helping. It's always fitting into something that's going to help us. And so what's really important is to release your attachment to saying, you know, it has to be Merlin at the end of your bed, putting down his staff and saying, it is time. You are the chosen one. Let us walk upon this path together. <laughs> That's spirit is very subtle. It's not going to be, you know, big fireworks. I mean, sometimes it is. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes there are some fun fireworks that go along with it. But a good majority of the time, spirit and your spirit guides, they're very subtle. They're there to help guide you. And, you know, guidance doesn't necessarily have to be a two by four moment where, you know, they're hitting you over the head and saying, listen, listen, listen. What they're going to do is they're going to send you little signs. They're going to send you little, you know, um, yeah, they're just going to send you little signs that you are going to recognize that are going to help you. And as they do that, as you begin to tune into that, as you release your attachment to saying it has to be, you know, a certain way, I have to see them. I have to know their names. I, like I said, I really want to invite everyone to release those attachments and just start to build that relationship. And here at noon, I actually have another video coming out where I talk about uh, two guides that you can really begin to work with to kind of see them in action in the physical world. But I wanted to come on this morning and I really wanted to do this live talk because it's so, so important for us to really begin to tune into those, into our inner guide. And no matter what form that inner guide takes, our guide is, like I said, it's one energy just taking a different form. You could have like 50 guides but it's the same energy, just taking 50 different forms. And it doesn't matter how many spirit guides you have. It doesn't matter. Like I said, it does not matter who they are. Let that go. It doesn't matter if you have Jesus as a guide. It doesn't matter if you have Mary Magdalene as a guide. Doesn't matter at all. Those are titles. Those are forms and spirit in and of itself is formless. You know, it doesn't matter if you have Hathor or Isis or Thoth. Okay, great. Congratulations. I'm, I'm so glad that you have that kind of wisdom, you know, coming into you. But it's the same wisdom that everyone else has access to. It's just coming in a different form. So release your attachment to the form that it has to take. Release your attachment to how it has to come in. For me, a lot of my guidance is just I'll know something or I hear an inner dictation and it's my own voice. It's not someone else's voice. It's not a deep man voice. It's not a womanly voice. It is simply my voice that says things in a way that I wouldn't say. And I, that's how I know it's guidance because it just comes through in that way and I, I just hear it in my head. Some people feel it, you know, some people have the feeling, some people hear it, you know, they actually hear an audible different voice. Some people are like me and they just kind of know something, but there are so many different ways in which your guides can communicate with you. Don't put it inside a box, release that box, break that box. Anytime you start to see it building up, smash it. You don't need the box. So that is just something I really wanted to discuss this morning, this brief little introduction about guides. So I want to do just a quick little review. Number one, the way that I view guides is that it is one energy coming to you, just taking many different forms. It's going to take the form that works best for you. So that's number one. Number two we have to release our attachment 
to how the guides come in and how we're supposed to communicate with them and how we look at them. You know, that's really what we have to be willing to do. So releasing those attachments and really just relaxing. And I'll actually tell you guys a story here in just a moment. Um, Does answering your own question count? It can actually count. If you're answering your own question from that place of love, compassion, understanding, then yes, that can totally count as your guides. Sometimes I have, and I don't know if you guys have heard it, but I have random conversations that I record so I can go back and listen to them where I'm actually having a conversation with my guides, but it's just me talking. That's all it is. It's me talking to myself. And I'm kind of answering these questions that are coming up for me, and then I'm answering them. But it's from a different viewpoint. I'm not changing, you know, my voice isn't changing. It's the same. It's just me answering my own question. So surely 100%, and I'm so glad you asked that question. That was beautiful. So hi, Mary. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. So the story that I want to tell you, and I've told this story before, is about how I did meet my guardian angel finally. And basically, you know, I had heard that getting talking to your animal guide or talking to your guardian angel were like the two easiest things. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do this. And it was three months, guys, of constantly meditating to try and meet them. I think I did every meditation under the sun for meeting your, your guardian angel. I think I did everyone underneath the sun for, you know, finding your animal guide. And there was nothing. It was just black. Nothing. Just my eyes were closed. I was looking at the back of my eyes. And of course it was because I had a really big attachment <clears throat> to meeting them. I have to meet them. That's the only way I'm going to get guidance is if I meet them. Little did I know I was receiving guidance the whole entire time without knowing a single name, without knowing anything at all. So it was finally one day and I was just fed up. I was done. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go and meditate. I'm not going to meditate to find my guardian angel. I'm not going to meditate to find my spirit animal. Like I'm done. And I remember I went to go sit down and meditate. And then right before the timer goes off, I swear like two minutes, this man in flowing white robes appears in my meditation. And I'm just very calm. Just like, oh, there's a floating man in my meditation. Cool. And he has this little bird on his finger and he kind of just throws it over to me. And I'm just like, what is this? Like, What is happening? And like, now I'm starting to get like excited. I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm meeting a spirit guide. This is amazing. And he goes, my name is Benjamin. And he goes, and I was like, what's this bird? And he's like, golden finch. And then he just disappeared. And then my alarm went off and that was it. And I was like, oh my God, Benjamin, a golden finch amazing. And uh, I remember I was like, okay, now I want to ask for like this confirmation. And I said, you know, if I really met my guardian angel and his name is Benjamin, I want to see the name Benjamin, like somewhere I want to see it. And then I would also, you know, you showed me this golden finch. I'd like to see a golden finch. And I went on, you know, that was kind of it. I went on my walk and what do you know? I saw two golden finches. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. And so now anytime I see a golden finch, I kind of take it as a sign from my guardian angel being like, hey, I'm with you. Or I also take it as a sign of celebration and communication because that's also what the golden finch means. So anytime I kind of see a golden finch, I know that either I'm going to have a client that day, uh, a new client, someone that I don't know, and I'm going to be meeting them. Or just that, you know, it's just a sign from my guardian angel. And I don't try to say, oh, okay, I'm going to have a client today because I saw this. I just say, thank you. That's it. And then move on with the day. And then uh, after that walk, I then, this is when Marsh was open. uh, But I went to Marsh with my grandma because she was visiting. And there are fruit tarts uh, that she, she loves or she used to love from Marsh. And... We went over there and in front of the little pastry counter, I looked down and there was a card and on the name of the, on the name of the card, it was Benjamin. And I was freaking out. I was like, oh, 
oh my God, it's happening. It's happening. Like, this is real. And so that was just kind of the story of when I met my guardian angel. But here's the beautiful thing. Notice it wasn't because I was trying. It wasn't because I was like trying to make it happen. I was just like, fuck it, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Like, and you know, keep on listening to all these meditations. I finally just let it go. And then, ta-da, there it was. Spirit isn't meant to be in a box. Spirit is, that's not what spirit's there to do. So we have to, like I said, release that box. Let that go. The more and more that we let it go, the more and more we just let spirit come to us in whatever form, in whatever way, know that it's going to show up that way and it's going to show up a lot more. So release those attachments, let those go. But I just wanted to share some of my thoughts about guides, angels, so forth and so on with all of you. I hope that you enjoyed it and come back at noon and you will see a recorded video that I'll be doing talking about two two guides that you can or two archetypal energies that you can begin to work with to help you kind of see how this energy works in your life. Uh, see how spirit really can help you work in your life. And the two guides, I'll just kind of give you a little preview. We're talking about your runner guides and your joy guides. So uh, if you're interested in those and you're interested in, you know, really having spirit kind of interact more with you in your life, feel free to come back here at noon and you can see that recorded video. So I send you all my love. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I will talk to you all later.